everyone, it's Ellen again, coming to you from my garage workshop, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you hear loud noises, we have a couple of cat backhoes and a packer and dump trucks running past our house constantly um, every day for the past two years building a whole bunch of condos. So I have my garage door open a little bit um, just for some air circulation because I'm going to be using some paint stripper today on this little table I'll show you in a minute. So we'll do some uh, paint stripper because I know a lot of you are really afraid of using paint stripper when you're doing furniture. Um, normally, um, if I was doing a paint to a piece to paint, which I am going to paint this whole thing, I'm not going to restain the top. I believe I'm going to just paint the top and then antique it all. But if I was just going to um, uh, paint a piece, I would just scuff sand it and make sure everything was really smooth. But I know a few of you have asked about using um, paint stripper, so I just want to show you the process I use. It's I think pretty safe as long as you just have a bit of ventilation. Um, I'll show you the little, the little things that I use and um, some suggestions. One of them would be don't use ordinary latex gloves or those nitro gloves, those really, you know, the blue ones or the white ones. Um, this stuff will melt right through them and burn your hands, so um, that's not nice. I had that happen to me once. Um, I will show you some of the things I use and then what I'm going to do is flip this table over uh, that. I'm going to flip this table over and I'm going to turn my sound off right now um, I'll flip this table over and I'll, sh I'll uh, show you how I sound the dowels because I do it a little bit differently than I think a lot of people do. I kind of just learn, you know, as I'm going along, I just sort of figure out what works for me. I might watch something or listen to what somebody said and try it and just go, well, okay, for me, that doesn't exactly work. So I just figure out my own techniques and it kind of works for me. So that's how I do it. Okay, so let's go through some stuff here. So first we have to clean it. Um, I use Fusion's TSP. Uh, I don't have the bottle handy here. It's a little bottle you get from Fusion. You put a capful in a liter of water. So what I do is I mix it up in a spray bottle rather than in a bucket or something because then I don't waste it. Um, so we're going to clean the whole piece first with TSP. That, that only gets the grime off of it, old dust old grease. Um, people have grease on their fingers. You don't even realize that. Somebody might have put food on this once. Um, as we're cleaning it too, we'll find out if there's any wax that's been spilt on it from candles. I come across that quite a bit. TSP won't take wax off, but it will show up so that when you do um, clean your piece, um, you can just take a scraper and take the wax off and then a little mineral spirits and it'll wipe the wax right out. So we're going to clean it first, then I'm going to flip it over to show you how to do a little bit of the sanding on the dowels. Um, then I'm going to take the legs right off because I don't like painting legs up against the frame or the bottoms of anything. If I can get them off um, and paint them separately from the top, I'll do that with almost every table, even big dining tables. I just think it makes for cleaner painting and there's no like weird marks, you know, where all the angles join and that sort of thing. And then we're going to, um, or actually I'll probably strip the top before I take the legs off. That would make more sense, but we'll start with cleaning this thing first. So I have uh, mineral, I have paint stripper and I use the full strength stuff. I don't use the citrus strip or the other um, one that takes two hours. <laughs> this takes about 10 to 15 minutes. It, if you have a piece that has like a thin layer of varnish on it and it's a fairly new piece, it's gonna go pretty fast. This has, I think, a few layers on it and it's kind of old and crusty, so I might need to use two coats. But still, this is like 10 to 15 minutes. It says 15 minutes on the jar, but really, honestly, I always find about 10 minutes max is what it takes to do that. So we have paint stripper. Um, it's already cleaned with TSP. And then we have, and actually, if you're stripping the top, you don't even need to clean the top. You just need to clean the dowels because the paint stripper will take everything off, even the dirt. Um, once I'm done with the paint stripper, you have to neutralize it with either soapy water 
um, or mineral spirits. And I use mineral spirits because if you use soapy water, your wood gets wet because you're now dealing with bare wood, right? And if your wood gets wet, um, you have to let it dry several hours. There's a big truck outside, so I hope you can hear me. Um, you have to let it dry several hours, but if you use mineral spirits, this stuff dries in like five minutes, so it's, it's really great for neutralizing. You see, they come right up to the door, very loud, very loud. <laughs> Drives me nuts. Um, and then I have a, a metal spatula because I find these work better than these plastic ones, but when you're stripping wood off of any um, piece, make sure that these corners do not dig into the wood. So if you're, if you're taking your paint stripper off, just be very careful not to press into the corners. Some people actually take a grinder, if you have access to a grinder, and they grind their corners round <laughs> so that they don't ever have to worry about that. And I, I am using this little plastic one probably on the very, very, very edges because they're very narrow, so I don't want to use this one. Um, that's my cleaning rag for the TSP. Um, these are the gloves that I use. These are gloves that are very thick rubber for um, doing paint strippers or dealing with any type of chemicals. It just says painting and stripping gloves. I think I paid about $4 and you could probably get them at any hardware store or you can get them on Amazon. Um, they're super thick and these will not burn through and so you won't get burns on your hands. Um, also, when you're doing this, advisable to wear some safety glasses. These fit right over my glasses, so they're bigger. But um, I have had it splash right up in here under my glasses, and, and I always thought that was kind of too close for comfort, so I went and actually bought some safety glasses. Um, you need a about a two and a half, for this one, it's a small table, about a two and a half inch chip brush. These are super cheap. I've seen these for a dollar fifty to two dollars. Some places I've even seen them at restores. You can get them cheap at the restore if you can find them. Um, I bought a package of ten of these. I believe it was. Yeah, no, eight of these for ten dollars. So that's pretty cheap um, at uh, Lee Valley when I was in there last week. So that worked out really good. So I got a lot of these now. I've got some storage. Um, I have my drill to take off the legs and on the flat parts on the bottom of the legs there's these little flat panels so I mean they're so tiny that they can be easily um, hi there they can be easily um, sanded with sandpaper but if you have a mouse sander like this this is a black and decker mouse sander it's just like the shape of a mouse I guess it has a really pointed tip which gets into really good corners and small areas really well these things maneuver like crazy I mean I love them for small flat surfaces and especially for edges like along the edge of a piece if I was sanding this so I'm not probably not going to use this today but um, just to show you what it looked like because I know a lot of people ask what the heck is a mouse sander it's kind of hard to explain <laughs> Um, okay, and sandpaper. So, um, when I was doing some chairs a while back, um, they had a lot of dowels, and I was really getting sick and tired of, you know, just trying to get the, the, um, paint, the old paint on. So, you know, I was thinking about a shoe shine. I was thinking about my husband once at the airport in Vancouver, and the shoe shine lady with the shoe shine, <laughs> and I thought, you know, might just work so I actually cut a piece of, of sandpaper long off of a sheet of paper and I started doing this shoe shine method around my dowels and it actually works really fast it's crazy but then I'll also in other areas I'll just take a piece that's about that big maybe three inches wide and about five inches long and I'll use that on other parts as well. So that's all I have to work with. Um, and like I said, we'll start with some sanding first, then we'll do the paint stripping, and then I'll prep the dowel. So I just wanna get this piece prepped today, and then um, sometime in the next few days, I'll do the painting. And the painting should go pretty neat, and then we're gonna do some um, antiquing, some distressing, and some wax on this. So it's gonna be pretty nice. So I'm going to point the camera downward and um, 
I think I lost my glasses. There goes the truck again. It's very noisy. I'm messing with busy. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to point the camera down so you won't actually see me much anymore. You'll just be seeing my paint pen. Well, the other thing I have uh, I have to tell you is um, when I I you know those little um, containers that salads and things come in or even if it's um it's it's like the ones that salads come in at costco the little tin ones i always keep all those because i use them to put um the paint stripper in so i will take the paint stripper wipe it on a paper towel and then i just shove it all into my container and then i get this lid on and i throw the container out in the in the bins that take it so that's and um, coffee tins any type of tin that has a fairly decent wide mouth is really good for doing this with paint stripper okay so I'm gonna move this around here put that over there and I'm gonna point the camera more over towards the table because you don't really need to see me that much um, I'm gonna put this on another table so let's move this around and this is a super light little table. It's really kind of easy to move. <laughs> kind of nice because I tend to do a lot of bigger pieces and so you can see the underside of this even. Um, I'm actually going to to sand or strip the underside too just to clean it up. It's super scratched up. Like it's it's in really not nice shape. The top side is just as bad. The dowels have a lot of old, old varnish. So like even up here, I don't know if you can see that. This has really old varnish that's just, it gets, it crackles, it starts to crackle. So I'm kind of guessing from the age of the look of the wood, um, the nails used rather than screws in some places. And some of these screws are like rusted right out. I'd guess 50 or 60, probably 60 years old at least, this piece. So. Okay, I'm just going to grab a glove so I don't wreck my hands anymore when I'm sanding. You can never have nice nails doing this, by the way. I don't know anybody that has nice nails that does this, actually. Okay, so I'm going to use my... A uh, larger piece on this here and I'm just going to go around see that doesn't work very well right but if I take this piece and I just shoot on it and like I said this is kind of a method I came up with because I got really tired of things not working well you see how that's taking it off it's just really fast and this is a 180 um, paper I'm not super worried about getting in this really intricate groove here uh, because if I'm painting it, um, I can always distress back in there. And if I wanted it to be fully covered, I would put a little bit of um, ultra grip in there. Oh. Normally I have this down on the floor and then have it kind of stuck between my knees so that I could work on it a little bit better without it moving, but I'm here all by myself. This is coming off really well. I find that uh, 180 or um, uh, sometimes 220, but I usually start with the 180 and then work up to 220. Also, if you have... Um, if you have a lot of dust, wear a mask. I didn't have one on because you wouldn't hear me, but. Works pretty good. And it, it really does leave it super, super smooth. In here, I will go around with, um, I'll just go around a little bit like that and get it out. 
It doesn't take much to scuff sand. Like if you're if you're painting it, you only have to scuff sand. If you're using chalk paint, I guess you don't have to even do that. But I like things to be super smooth. I wouldn't want to paint over this crusty bit here, right? So um, I will use that. And another thing is just take your paper and roll it into like a tight um, pad like that. And that really helps for getting in here. So these really tiny, tiny bits. You can go up here. These could come off really well. So that's good. And mostly I'm getting it off to smooth out the old varnish. I don't want it on there. I think it's really gross. And painting over that, all that tackle would just show up underneath it really well too. So you don't want that to happen. It goes pretty fast, so you know a lot of people think, oh, sanding is just the worst, but you just have to get into it and then it's, it's all good. I don't usually paint the very undersides, but it's kind of rough, so I want to clean it up a little bit. Just make it tidy again. And it doesn't have to be perfect as long as I can get most of that rough stuff off, which I think I'm getting. I like having your cheek cleaned, I guess. A little bit more there, and then we'll go down to here. See, if I had this down between my knees, I could easily hold it, but it kind of wants to slip around a bit while I'm doing this. Not great, hey. I find this, especially on chairs, when you're working on chairs and you have like, I don't know, what do they have, five or six dowels in the back of each chair. I find this works really well. Okay, now just tidy this up. Do my last tidy. I'm not sure what kind of whip this is even. I have a feeling it's, uh, it might be maple. I have to get past all this junk on it to see what it even is because it's so dirty. And having said that, I forgot to TSP this, so. Uh, um, once you sand, though, you don't want it. <laughs> I should have TSP'd the leg here first, but I didn't, so I'm not going to worry about it. Now, see, this isn't all off, but it's smooth. If I wanted it all off, I could if I was going to restain it, but I just want to smooth out the whole thing and get this crackly varnish off. I'm not worried about getting all of this coating off as long as it's all scuffed. Yeah, I was doing a set of chairs a while back, and when you're doing chairs, of course, they're sitting flat. They're not rolling around like this thing is. And um, it was so easy to use that shoe shine method that I came up with. I just thought, you know, it's going to be easier. So I just hung onto the chair and started doing all the dowels, and it went so fast. It was just amazing. I was so happy with that. And again, I'm painting this, so I'm just worried about stuffing it up. I'm not worried about making it perfect. Oh, yeah, I can see down here. Just scuffed all up. And if you're staining, you would want to sand with the grain. 
Um, if you're painting, it doesn't matter if you sand with the green or not. Um, if you sand against the green and then you put stain on, the stain will show up all the scratch marks. You have to be careful with that as well. that leg so I would do the other leg exactly the same way um, and then once it's all set um, look at the dust coming off there I don't know if you can see that you see that dust <laughs> there's a lot of dust that's why you should wear a mask so it's really hard to wear a mask and paint at the same time and talk I mean at the same time to you guys but um, Okay, so let's flip this over because um, that didn't take very long and this whole, this whole side here now is, is done. Um, there's this piece here to do which will go pretty fast. But I'm going to flip it back over and move this table. Okay. Now this um this has a, a lot of looks like old paint or something on it. It's very wobbly because probably there's a screw loose somewhere down here. Um it's I don't know if you could see all this damage on it. There's there's no cuts. Uh there's a couple of deep deeper runs here but that's okay we can work with that it's just really mottled really water stained i'm thinking they must have had plants on it or something okay so i'm gonna start with this paint stripper i'm gonna put my glasses on because i don't want to get it in my eyes i am going to put my gloves on and get my Hmm, my coffee can and my paper towel over here and my brush. <clears throat> okay, so that's ready. That is ready. Putting my gloves on. These gloves are awesome. You really, you don't feel a thing. If I wore these, um, the, the, these are nitrile gloves. The paint stripper doesn't eat through them but it does cause them to bubble a tiny bit but then it starts to burn your fingers through the, <laughs> the gloves um and and the other gloves the latex gloves this stuff just eats through them like immediately so these are the best it just saves all around you don't have to worry and they go up quite high so if your arms are protected your feet are protected your face is protected you're good um these have a safety lid on them so basically you would push and turn or just grab and push and turn like that. You don't have to shake this stuff. Some people put this in a bowl and they use it out of the bowl, but I don't have time for stuff like that. So I just pour it on. Okay. So you need a good thick coat. It can't be dry anywhere or it stops working. So you, you just want to get it on and then anywhere that still needs it, you go back and you add more. So I can see already that I need more here. Um, one of these cans does a few of these types of pieces, quite a few actually, probably five or six maybe. Um, or it will do um, one dining table with maybe two or three coats of this stuff. This one actually has a kind of a fruity wood smell to it. It's not the horrific smelling one, but it is very strong. You can see it already starting to bubble. Now I'll go down here. So, so far I've used maybe a cup of this stuff. It really works fast. So that's the reason you want your, you want your, um, 
Oh, look at that already, hey? That's the reason you want your eyes and your face protected and your skin. I'm just going to put a little bit more on to keep it really wet along the edges here. And this stuff is awesome. So this is the Heirloom Plus paint stripper. And you can get this probably at any hardware store or on Amazon. They probably have it as well. I don't get tons. I mean, I don't get everything from Amazon because I like to buy things locally. But um, there's some things that are just so fast to get if you're a Prime member. And boy, this is really working fast. I am super impressed with this stuff, I tell you. <laughs> I mean, it's working almost as fast as I can get it on there. Okay. But I do order some things from Amazon because I find it's kind of hard to find some things in town. And I figure by the time I run around, use my time and, you know, $20 worth of gas trying to find something. And I could just look it up and order it and it's there in two days. I might just do that. So I'm just cleaning my brush off a little bit. So I can see, I'm going to show you this close up. This is what it looks like when it's working. So you can see it bubbling and just coming up and it looks like really gross. It's very gross. But let's see what's underneath here. I am anxious to see. Very anxious to see. So it looks like it looks like it's pulled up the um the the old varnish and all the gunk that was on it really quickly. Um, I'm going to get my, my large spatula now, and I'm going to get a piece of paper towel. And I just scoot everything to one end. It's coming up beautifully. There's no residual. If there was residual, well, here's some residual. It's sticking. So you can feel it sticking underneath the blade. Wow, it's beautiful. Oh, look at the grain of this. Gorgeous. You know what? Look at that. I would never have thought that beautiful grain was under there. So, you know, in, in seeing that, now I'm thinking it might just look better stained because that is beautiful. It almost looks like a redwood, whatever it is. I don't know. It's not gorgeous. It's beautiful and it's a deep burgundy color too. It's really pretty. So now I, this is the yucky part where I take it and I just scoop it into my tin and then I'll wipe my blade. And I'll go down and scoop it into my tin again. It's kind of like a paint stripper toilet. <laughs> I guess you could call it. It just takes it all off nicely. I'm being very careful not to drive the, the corners into the wood because I don't want to damage the wood. So that's got it off the top. Now, I'm going to take this little guy, this little spatula, and it's really soft and just go all around the edge. And it's not going to get it all, but I'll show you what we do. Yuck, it's gross. There's so many people really afraid of paint stripper, but honestly, it is the best stuff if you want to get things really nicely down to bare wood and you're going to be staining. And like I said, I hadn't planned on staining this, but now that I see the wood grain, I'm thinking I just might. And I feel perfectly safe. I have my garage door open about a foot. I have my safety glasses on. I have gloves that practically go, well they do go halfway up my arm, and I have my legs protected, my arm protected. Okay, 
So that goes in my, my can, just dump it in. So now what I want to do is uh, clean this up more. So I'm going to take some paper towel and go all around the edge and get the excess um, stuff off right into the grooves. This is gorgeous wood. I don't know what it is, but it's beautiful. So that one's done. Go for another one. It's a super um, light table, but a lot of the, um, I guess it's the, the um, hardwoods can be super light. In fact, some of them even float. <laughs> So you can't always tell by, by the weight of something, whether it's a hardwood or a softwood. Now, that did not get everything off the edges. So like you can see right here, there's a bunch of junk and it goes all the way around. So what you do now is you take a piece of steel wool and this can be actually cut. So you just unroll it if you want, or you can leave it in a wad like that. I'm going to leave it in a wad. And what we do is we put mineral spirits on it. And like I said, you can use Dawn dish soap or soapy water, even laundry soap or something, to, to wipe this down and it'll neutralize it at the same time and take the last of the stuff off. But I like to use... Um, um, mineral spirits because the mineral spirits works just as well i'll show you here and it really cleans up any residual stuff so you just put a little bit on and use uh, now i'm going in the green with the green because now that i realize that this is a really special piece of wood i don't want to cross green it and wreck it because i think we're going to restain this it does look like maple. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's maple. So I'm just working all of the all of the excess gunk off, and it will eat through the the remaining bit of um, paint stripper as well, which kind of gets gluey when it's dry. So the the uh, steel wool works to cut through the last bit of it. Mineral spirits um, is a little bit smelly, like mild gasoline, I guess, but it's it's okay. I mean, just leave your door open a little bit and you should be fine. And also normally you probably wear a mask, but I don't have one because then I can't talk to you, so. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over to the good side. And what I'm feeling for now, as I'm doing this, is I'm feeling for any sticky spots on the top. And I'm not finding any. But I am finding sticky spots around the edge. So I'm going to get more paper towel. And let's wipe this back. Get any excess mineral spirits off. And again, I'm feeling as I do this. Look at that. I'm feeling as I do this for any, uh, now for any uh, residual on the top. So what I know from this right now is the green is super close. Um, it looks like maple because they often, well, oftentimes with wood anyway, they piece pieces together. So I can see one, two, this has the same grain, three. So one, two, three, four pieces put together to make this tabletop. A lot of people think that these pieces are solid wood. They call it. Well, it is wood, but it's not a solid slab of wood. It's very, very rare to have a piece that's a solid slab of wood. Way back in the day, um, before veneers and, and things like that, they often use solid pieces of wood for furniture, but really not so much anymore. Um, okay, now I am going to do the edges a little bit more. 
but I need a container. This is just a little metal container. I'm going to put a little bit more paint stripper around the very edges and get that right down to bare wood. Isn't that pretty though, hey? If I stain this right now just with clear, a clear lacquer, that's the color it would be. And I think beautiful. I mean, what a difference. I'm interested to see what the lights are made of. So they might be turned, just turned maple as well. So I'm just putting a little bit more paint stripper on these ends because it didn't get all this stuff off. So we've got to clean it up. Can't leave it like that. And I'm just going to work in smaller, a little bit smaller sections this time so that I can be right on top of this and get it off there. It's going to look so pretty. See, now I'm questioning whether I even want to paint it at all. <laughs> but this is the thing with these old pieces is you really, they're like a mystery. You don't know what you're getting into until you get into it. So you might have an idea to start with and then it totally changes. <laughs> okay, so I don't see this blistering up too much. I'll wait for a minute and keep trying. It's not really wanting to do too much, so it actually feels pretty smooth on this end. It feels like a lot of it is off, so it might just be that other end that's got more junk on it still. This definitely has junk on it. And probably in here too. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working on it now that you know what I'm doing. <laughs> The steel wool actually is, is um, sanding it at the same time. But even once all this is dried, I would still give it a very light sanding if I was going to stain it again. Um, because you don't want any bits missed at all. Or it would look very funny. So that's got that in totally cleaned up. And a lot of this side, I'm gonna try this side. The table is so wobbly. Probably somebody took the table apart at some point and then didn't put the legs on and didn't balance them after. And that's what happens, they leave it all wobbly looking. Not good. Okay, so let's clean this bit now. Get my tray of stuff. And let's just see if any more comes off. And if not, we'll let it dry a bit and we'll sand it off. Because you can always do the finishing with, with the sanding. I'm not worried about getting more on top. Because right now it's all in the cleanup stage. Just mostly want to get these ends tidied up a little bit. They feel a little bit gummy to me. We'll get that tidied up. It's getting very, very, very humid in here. So I'll have to put my fans on soon. Okay. Now. Yeah. Um, this, you know, it almost looks like red oak because this has no stain on it anymore. But isn't that weird? I mean, look, this is what it looks like now. And I would have never seen that beneath the dark brown that somebody had on it. I don't know if they restained it and didn't know what they were doing and that's how it ended up or what the heck, but it should not be, it should not have been that ugly dark brown color, that's for sure. Need a little bit more mineral spirits. Did 
you're a person that does a lot of um, woodworking and paint, you know, painting stuff or wants to get into doing it a lot, you should buy, you know, things like, you know, spirits in the larger containers. These ones here are about five, six dollars in pound. But I go through a fair amount of them because I love using it to clean up pieces. Okay. That's gorgeous. Wow. I am totally floored by this. Um, so, like I said, I'm not worried that there's tiny a tiny little bit of roughness on it because I will be sanding it um, and I would sand this with very fine 220 maybe I don't want to go deeper than that right now beautiful wood beautiful beautiful stuff okay so now that I'm all gassed out with my paint thinner and paint stripper I'm gonna stop doing that put my her away so I don't spill it later. Okay. Now, hard to get off of huh? Okay. So this coffee container now, um, paint stripper can be washed out or uh, yeah, washed out of the brush. So. This could be, just be put in some mineral spirits and washed up, so I'll do that later. I do throw the steel wool out in my coffee tin, and then I clean it up and put the tin in the garbage bin. And this can also be washed later. It all comes off. So, um, okay, now. Yeah. All right, so let's see what somebody said here. Oh, hi, Dina. <laughs> um, okay, so that is beautiful. I mean, wow, I would have, I'm just shocked. There's no scratches, nothing in it, so it's beautiful stuff. Okay, so I am going to put something soft down, and I'm going to end soon, but I'll just show you. I'm curious to see what the bottom side is, is showing now. Um, I'm going to put something soft down so I don't scratch my beautiful table, which was a really ugly table about 15 minutes ago. And I'm going to flip this over again. Okay. And then I'm going to take this thing apart. So let's do that and then I'm going to see what this underside has. This underside might have, um, I mean it might come up just as beautifully as the top side did. It should if it's the same wood, <laughs> you would think, right? Okay. Look at, look at the rust. Um, on these screws so these screws came out in about the 60s i believe but they're very rusty and that takes a long long time to get them like that so i'm still guessing it's about 60 years old so much dust in there. That's really bad. Let's see. How can we get... Oh, there you go. It didn't have a screw. That's why I couldn't see it. Okay, we're off. All right, so I would take these spindles and do my sanding. Just really quickly sand them off. Um, 
and then I would start to paint. And I think I still will paint these. I'm going to see what the wood is really like when I get down to it, but I'm kind of doubting it's the same wood as the tabletop. And that was usually the case. In order to save money on making these things, they would use um, inferior wood for the bases and the legs. Then they'd use the most beautiful wood on top. So I'm curious, though. Which way is up? This way is up. We're going to put that over there for now. And I'm just going to try, you know, before I put all my, my paint stripper stuff away, I'm going to give it a whirl and see what I can come up with here because it should look pretty cool just on the underside. So that's the thing like when you start into a piece and you're really not sure what you want to do with it, just start, like at least start. Don't sit and stare at it for a hundred years trying to figure out what to do with it. Just start on it because um, these pieces literally will come to life as you're working on them and then you'll all of a sudden see what they're supposed to be or if you want to paint them and you want to modernize them make them a little bit more modern looking then you know what direction to go like half an hour ago I was going to paint this whole thing but now that I see what the, the, the wood is on top and I think it's a pretty nice wood that you just wouldn't even find these days really I'm thinking I'm just going to stay in the top and maybe paint the bottom. And if the bottom is really beautiful, then I'll probably stay in the bottom. Sometimes it's just worth it to stain the whole thing and clean it up rather than painting. I mean, I love painting pieces. I think it's awesome, but sometimes you just don't want to paint them. You just want to clean them up and make them nice again. Okay, so that's starting to bubble. This heirloom glass is what I'm using. Um, and I got it from Home Depot. It was on sale for like $6 a can. Pretty cheap for paint thinner. Or I mean that uh, paint stripper. And it works super fast. So the citrus strip and all those take about two hours. So I mean, I don't have two hours to sit and watch, watch stripper work. Plus you have to cover them with plastic and keep them moist. This stuff just goes on and eats it. Pretty fast stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna put that away. And I'm gonna wait for a couple of minutes at least. And get some more paper towel out. And like I said, in a couple of days, we'll finish up on this one. Um, and see how it looks. Yeah, it's just this gorgeous wood. Beautiful stuff. Wow. And here I thought it was just a junky old piece of furniture. <laughs> but it is almost looking like redwood or something underneath. Because when I take this, um, Old, old stain and varnish off, the underside is red. So it's either black walnut or um, I don't believe it's red, but it looks like some type of redwood. Doesn't look like cedar though. So I'm thinking black walnut maybe. Very pretty, whatever it is. Gorgeous. I'm tickled pink with this. I would have never guessed it in a million years. It should be a beautiful piece when we're all done. So, no more painting at white. That's out the window unless we can do the legs white, but I'll have to see again what the wood on the legs looks like because if it's like this, I'm not gonna be painting them. Okay, so let's get some more mineral spirits. And again, the reason I use mineral spirits, you could use soapy water to neutralize the paint thinner, but mineral spirits, um, 
dries way faster than soapy water. If you used water on naked wood like this now, you would have to wait for it to dry for several hours. But this way you can get it off, let it dry 10 or 15 minutes, and then you can start painting or, or um, whatever you want to do to it. I would still probably wait 12 hours before staining though. And I would also use a wood conditioner before staining it. Now I want to show you guys something. This is really, really important. Um, in fact, today on one of the sites that I belong to, people were talking about bleed through. There's a little bit more there. This is the underside, by the way. So I'm not too worried about uh, making it perfect, but I will let it dry and sand it a bit. So they were talking about bleed through. And I said, sand it down a little bit, or in this case, we did paint stripper. Take a cloth, and if your cloth shows up um, red, or um, just when you're using the mineral spirits, if it shows up this dark color, you know that when you paint it, it's going to have bleed through. If it's a wood that's not going to bleed through, you won't get any real color on your cloth. It might be a bit dusty, but this is actually coming up red. So I know if I painted this, it would bleed through. So I would have to put a primer on it. Um, and you can use the bin shellac primer. And just roll a coat on it. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful, hey? So that's the first step to prepping the tabletop. I'm going to let it dry and then later I will give it a nice sanding down. But I really do believe that this is uh, black walnut, probably. It looks like black walnut or something like that. But it's not uh, an inexpensive wood, that's for sure. So that is it for today. I am getting really hot in here. It's getting nice and warm out. but. Um, I'll probably be back on E. I'm still helping my friends move, so or I pack up, but um, I'll probably be back on in a couple of days. If I do get time tomorrow, I'll pop on tomorrow, but I'll leave a notifier as to when I'm coming on. But um, share our videos, go to our YouTube page because. comments, a little bit of music, whatever. Um, I'm trying to make them um, more informative than just, you know, watching someone paint and not really knowing what they're doing. So, But there's a lot of people that want to learn how to paint furniture um, because a lot of people are doing it now and rather than keep buying the same old junk that falls apart every time you move, people are looking for pieces that are good and solid and they can move them 50 times. And, I find a lot of the people that buy stuff are in their 30s and 40s, so they're looking for good stuff. They're tired of the, you know, the cheaper pieces. So um, it's fun to do. It's relaxing. But share with your friends um, if you know somebody that might want to learn, and um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would be really appreciated. And I will talk to you in the next couple of days. Thanks, guys.